Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. He's recognised as the greatest record producer the industry has yet seen, George Martin. George's idea was to take people out of an environment to put them into harmony with nature. Going to Montserrat was like going into a dream. It was great to have an environment around us where you could escape to. The characters that worked in the studios became part of people's lives. George, the cook was in the band, the housekeeper was in the band. It's like it was all one big band. There was no doubt there was a magic on Montserrat. This was sort of the rock star dream. You tied in creativity with being in a special place. At any time in the studio, it's very easy to lose perspective, especially when you're locked up and it becomes your whole world. No Brothers and Arms album was done in a few days. The place sort of intensified everything that you were. I mean, we weren't physically aggressive with each other, but it got pretty heated. We went there for the isolation. Here we were in this paradise, which we soon turned into a living hell. When the volcano went off, that was a a pinnacle point of change, a point where nothing was ever going to be quite the same again. It's like seeing something you've created falling into disrepair. Everything has a period. You bring something out of nothing, but it always goes back to nothing again. The 80s was like the renaissance, the golden era of studio recording. It's about the dream that George had of that wonderful space in Montserrat where you had the sun, the sea, nature and music. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 365. Releasing September 1 in Australia on digital is Under the Volcano, a documentary that explores the legacy of AIR Studios Montserrat, Sir George Martin's state-of-the-art music studio situated in a little-known part of the Caribbean that birthed some of the biggest albums of the 80s. Featuring the likes of Sting, Mark Knopfler, Jimmy Buffett, and many more, Under the Volcano provides not only how Sir George Martin's vision shaped an influential era of music, but also his impact on the people of a small Caribbean island who will go on to face great adversity. Joining me now are the filmmakers of Under the Volcano, producer Cody Greenwood and director Gracie Otto. Cody and Gracie, I thank you both very much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Cody, I'm going to ask you first, you know, Under the Volcano is very much your brainchild you came up with a concept for the documentary and you have a, a very much a personal connection with the, the island of, of monster rats um what is your history with the island and how did that inspire you to really make the documentary take those first steps forward um yeah i've grown up with the island of Montserrat. my mum was an artist she was a painter and lived down there in the 1970s pretty much exactly the same time that sir george martin the beatles producer went to visit the island and fell in love with it and so she was there during the early years of the studio um and would sell her artwork to the to the the musicians that would come down there to make a living and she's still an artist today so it really launched her career Um, And then over the years when I was growing up, she would hold art exhibitions in Antigua, which is the island next to Montserrat. Mm -hmm. And um, and, because all of her artwork is influenced by the West Indies and we would travel to the island of Montserrat. And, you know, so I always knew about this crazy studio that was around for 10 years. Um, And then when I started my company, Rush Films, it was the first project that I thought would be a really great sort of launching platform um, and obviously it was, I, I sort of bitten off more than I could chew, I think, with a film of this scale. Gracie, how did you um, come to get on board with, uh, with Cody's project? I came on board, um, Cody had kind of done a 70-page pitch deck of every band that had been down there and anyone who had recorded there and a whole bunch of stuff. And I was on something else at the time and I remember being, like, overwhelmed with the amount of material that was in this booklet and kind of going, where do you, where do you start? Like there's just so many bands that went down there. Um, 
And I'd done a documentary before that was on the theatre impresario that kind of had, you know, 60 odd celebrity interviews in it. Um, and this one was, you know, looking like it was going to be, yeah, a lot of um, the music producers, the musicians themselves, the people on the island. So for me, it seemed like a film that was going to have a lot of people talking in it, which I really like. Um, and it was, yeah, more about where do we start with this and how we're going to structure this film. Because, we're, you know, besides the fact that you need to know about Sir George Martin and the hurricane, the volcano, it was like, how are you going to tell a decade of music history as well in an hour and a half? So I think for us that was the big challenge when we first started. Cody, the whole era of what was happening there in Monster Rap features a large number of bands, influential albums, and just when you got when in the documentary, clearly there's a high level of affection from these artists, from these bands towards George Martin, and also to the people of Monster Rat as well. No matter how many years have passed and how many millions of albums of soul these these artists have had, we're still surprised to find that that time there still had such an impact on them. Um, well, with Sir George Martin, I mean, he there is he's the Beatles producer. I don't think there'll ever be a producer like him again so there's obviously a profound respect for him um and admiration people also you know even that were just friends with george he seemed to have had a really huge impact on him um with the people of montserrat i mean i wasn't surprised because i i've met a lot of the people in the film before and i just think the people of montserrat are the most incredible kind people in the whole world positive um so i wasn't surprised but in terms of how much they were loved, but I was surprised at how much of an impact they did have on the musicians and how and the memories. I mean, when we first, the first question I asked Sting, he spoke in extreme detail about all of his memories with Danny the Windsurfer, all of his memories with the chef. So he could remember, um, you know, every little moment of his time in Montserrat with them and that was and it, more so than even his time with the rest of the band. Um, so I think that's really special and it's a testament to how incredible the people of Montserrat are. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by 80s Tees. 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed t-shirts and pop culture gear from your favourite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is also brought to you by Voodoo. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show. Gracie, what was really cool about the, the film is that, you know, these documentaries, you have the artists and they talk about the great times that they had there. But what was really important too is that some artists didn't necessarily have the best time there as well. There's a really cool kind of archive clip of Lou Reed in, in, in the movie and, you know, grumpy old Lou, he has always had something to say. And his thing was like, you know, I need to have the grit and the grime of the city around me. It didn't really work out. And the members of Duran Duran, kind of like in a similar kind of a uh, similar ter- territory there. How important was it to show the other side of, of this paradise, which for some people, and I think some members of the police even said, that their time there, even though the isolation could be really creatively uplifting, um, it was kind of like a, almost like a living hell for them as well, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I think, you know, some bands went down there, you know, and you go, oh, it's in the Caribbean, we're going to record an album, we've got stacks of money to do it, this would be great. And I think the thing about, you know, creativity is it's like people who, um, you know, write books and just, like, get writer's block. It's like I can imagine people going down there and being like, I feel totally uninspired or, you know, it's too, like Nick Rhodes says, it's like it was too hot during the day where Simon Bond was someone who just loved to 
to be in the outdoors and swim, whereas, you know, there are some people like myself who could stay up all night in a dark room and work mm. uh, and other people that. So I think, you know, for people it was good to kind of acknowledge also that they were at different points in their careers um, or and different ages as well. Like I think it's important with Duran Duran that, to realise that they were, you know, at the height of their fame but they were also 21. Yeah. So, you know, the idea of going down is like, to an island like that, it's like, great, it'd be fun. And then they really felt like they needed, you know, the city and the fans around to have that momentum create creatively. So, yeah. Gracie, just to stay with you, what was also really cool about a documentary too was that the people of Montserrat, especially the people who worked in the studio, they are featured in the documentary as well. It's about their influence. It's about their, the impact that this experience had on them as well. And, you know, the musician, musicians, they came and went these people had to stay. This was their home. Um, they are, and they're very much characters in their own right. So how long is it important to show their story as well in the whole scheme of things? I think, you know, when I first came on board, it was very clear from Cody that they were going to be part of the film. Um, and as as we started, you know, doing research on it, it became clear to me that, you know, they had so much to say and they were such an important part of it. And, and I think, you know, the fact that they did singing and, and, you know, backing vocals on some tracks Some tracks were written about them and they still have, you know, love and affection from the big stars um, to the people of the island still to this day um, was something that was really unique and, um, you know, that we really felt like we want to try and capture this 360 perspective of um, Air Studios down there. Um, so they were kind of integral to telling that story. Cody, it's one thing to track down these stars. You know, they have agents, they have publicists. You can reach out to them with your email, et cetera. Trying to track down the people who lived and worked there in Montserrat must have been very difficult, especially after the incidents with the volcano and the hurricane. A lot of people were displaced. They must have been around the world, everywhere. How did you actually track down everyone and find them to get them on camera here? That must have been quite a bit of sleuthing on your part. Yeah, it was. I mean, like the, the bartender, Judy Martin, had his details. The chef, we somehow tracked down a landline number for him and we knew that he was in Boston and that he worked in a hospital. And um, Gracie and I would call this landline, I think because he does shift work, it was really hard to get the right time, but we would call this landline every few days hoping he'd pick up. And this was going for like five weeks. And one day we were at a documentarian's house, Nick Broomfield in LA with sort of our head in our hands being like, you need to find the chef. And I was like, I'm going to call the chef's number again. And he answered. And it was so funny because we said to him, can you come, you know, can you come to LA? We'll fly you out. And so we organized to get him on a flight, but we never even told him what our names were because we were hmm. so excited when he picked up the phone. So when he landed in LA, he was like, I don't even know what your names are. You never even told me. And um, and so that was hilarious. And then for everybody else, they were on the island of Montserrat, which, you know, there's no addresses on that island. You ask somebody where someone lives and they say, oh, it's the yellow house down the road, around the corner, near the palm tree. And that's how everyone <laughs> operates on Montserrat. So that was a bit of slow thing when we were down there, but lucky the island's quite small. So we ended up tracking down the people that we needed. Cody, just to stay with you, you know, the music industry has changed so much since that time um, in, in Montserrat. And, you know, that really represents a bygone era of kind of like music recording one thing that hasn't changed through all that time is the difficulty in securing music rights for movies. And I've talked to many filmmakers in regards to their own documentaries, even like I spoke to the filmmaker who did the recent Michael Hutchins documentary, and even though they had In Excess on the film and everything else, getting the music for In Excess songs were very difficult. It was the hardest hurdle that he had to do. In regards to getting all the songs needed in this movie, huge, big songs of that era still have an impact today. How difficult was it to try to get all of that in line in, in the film? Extremely difficult. We had a, um, a music supervisor called Kim Green who is a genius. She has done all the Mad Max. She's doing the new Elvis film. She is the master of music rights. Um, but the trick with Under the Volcano was it wasn't one band. Like, I mean, in excess, I'm sure it would be a nightmare because the thing about music is, it's not just the record company need permission from, you need all the songwriters. So mm. if there's been conflicts between the band, it makes it extremely difficult. They all have to give you permission. So, um, Kim, we had all these mega artists, you know, America, Rolling Stones, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, like everyone in this film. So it was dealing with so much, so much different management and record companies and all of it. Um, but, Kim, we started very early on before I even started 
developing the series, I called up Kim Gray and I said, this is what it's about. And I think she was a bit like, oh, my God. But um, we started that process for, for years of, of working out who had the rights and um, it was just a, a process. It was only one song that we couldn't get for the film out of all the songs we wanted to license and that was While My Guitar Gently Weeps by The mm, Beatles. Yeah. Um, and, you know, The Beatles is hard to license at the best of times. So I think we did a pretty amazing job to get all the tracks that we did in the film. I think so too. And I, hopefully there's a soundtrack coming out for this because I think that will go really well uh, in, in both retail and in, in downloads as well. Yeah. Um, so i got last question is for both of you. So you've heard the stories, you've seen the footage. You know, if you could jump in a time machine and go back in time and, and be a fly on the wall in one of these sessions or one of these musicians or anything like that, which one would it be? Gracie, you go first. I go Rolling Stones. Just to see how Mick and uh, Keith can like got back together and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, so, that sounds a, that's a, that'll be quite a good one. What about yourself, Cody? Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with Grace with Stones. I think the police would have driven me insane. Um, I would have really loved to have been a fly on the wall with Elton's band to see the speed that he writes. Everyone was telling us these stories about how he would just sit around the pool and bang out a hit track in like ten minutes, and I just think that is incredible. So probably the Elton John sessions, if not the Stones. I myself would love to see that um, Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney collaboration yeah. sound out. I think that would be <laughs> awesome as well. <laughs> love a lot of good moments. And that's what's so great about the documentary. For everyone listening, it's September 1st in the strange cinemas under the volcano. Really great music documentary about a bygone era, um, all the gr- these big hits that came from that time. And I just want to say congratulations to you, Gracie, and, the co- and yourself, Cody, as well, on the documentary. did such a great job here. I'm sure you could have made a feature film just based on the experiences of every separate separate artist and get it all in 90 minutes and make such a great documentary. Uh, job well done. So congrats to you both and thank you both for your time today. Thank, thank you very much. much. Nice to meet you. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.